The origins to this line was not to move passengers, but in aid to move high quality ore from one side of the Cumbrian Pennines to the other side's blast furnaces. Otherwise, it's a long and welcome trek via Newcastle and Carlisle. So many railway companies were paying particular attention to its potential as it was seen as a very good money maker. However, in the end, it was awarded to the South Durham and Lancashire Union Railway, a railway line that would be linking Stockton and Darlington Railway near Bishop Auckland with the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway at T-Bay via Barnacastle, Stadiumall Summit and Kirby Stephen. The ceremonial cutting of the first sod for the company was at Kirby Stephen on the 25th of August, 1857. And that for the East Valley Railway was at Appleby on the 28th of July, 1858. So it was our uh, native Cumbrian engineer, Bouch, that had to survey this land. And one of his aims was to plan the most economical route, following the contours, to avoid building any tunnels, keep those costs down. There was formidable gradients, and to avoid as many ditches and cuttings as possible. Don't forget, we've got the 1,370 foot high summit of Stainymore. And so the valleys were to be crossed eventually by the 12 viaducts, including three made from raw iron that crossed the Tees, the Deep Dell, and the Bila rivers at a cost of 77 and a half thousand pounds. A lot of money in them days. The viaducts Tees and Deep Dell, Bila, and Smardale viaduct were to be built wide enough to accommodate two tracks. Oh, that is truly one magnificent view. This little spot here where I'm stood, there is a little path that comes over the stone wall. I believe it's a public right of way. You can go through the gate and carry all the way on. This little bit behind me is private land. And that's indicative of a lot of track bed, X track bed, where it was sold off to the farmers or given to some sort of heritage group to look after so if you do come out trekking make sure you stay safe make yourself known and try and get some permission and you might often find these little things as well shotgun cartridges <laughs> don't worry you know if you're walking off the wrong way if you find one of those now the beginning of this journey is a place called Barris it's a little hamlet and it's close to the river Bilar in Cumbria the first train to run prior to the station opening at Barrett and its yard was of course the mineral train and it passed that area on the 8th of August later on from February 1862. 15 years later the station was built. Passengers started to use this line and this area from February 1862. 15 years later then the station was built at Barrett at an altitude of 1,100 feet and was the highest station in England up until the point they built Dent Station on the Settle and Carlisle railway line when that opened in 1877.
After building the line, it was opened in 1861 and became known as the Stainmore Line. I will start my walk from Barris. Going east, the line is mostly consumed by the A66 over the summit. West has been its best features before we get into Kirby Stephen and the Eden Valley Line. Considering freight was the order of the day, the goods yards was discontinued on the 1st of December 1952 and from that date it had only operated as an unstaffed halt. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. The abutment the buttress on this side, spanning across over way to my right hand side, up to here. And now I've got to climb this to get to the top where there should also be an abandoned disused signal box, which is just going to be the highlight of my day. Just a bit more trekking to do. Onwards and upwards. Oh crikey, <laughs> this is really taking it out of me. <sighs> it's a, what is the saying? You can't tell how bad the train is until your nose is right up to it. This is a, quite a trek, but it'd be worth it. But I think I'll stop halfway and have a bit of that water. <sighs> Spider. <sighs> That's better. That's a good job the weather's fair with me today, I'll be struggling. So in case you're wondering, 
that's a signal box. Or was a signal box. What's left of a signal box? Signal boxes, if you don't know, uh, normally there's a chap in them days anyway. Up at the top there, assuming the ladders around the back, or the stairs anyway, uh, would have controlled the movements of the trains along a section of line known as a block with signals dotted around that he could have controlled. There may have been parts where the track changes to the other track if a train had to change over track because it was snow drifts had come in and they had to go off in a different direction. Well, generally they were up there. For the love of money, I don't know how on earth they would have tracked across here in the snow drift. It must have been a heck of a job to get here. And this must have been one of the most remote signal boxes being used in England at the time. Just over in this direction down here is Bielar Viaduct. To the east of Barra Station is Stadenmoor Summit. That's at 1,370 feet above sea level. The travelling down the line in this direction goes to Kirk Stephen and this viaduct is our first railway structure on this section of the line so the construction of Bielov Island began on the 25th of November 1857 when the foundation stone was laid by Henry Pease of Darlington and it was built by Gikes Wilson and Company from Middlesbrough at a total cost of 31,600 and 30 pounds worth every every penny. Should you have a little look inside. What a beautiful sight. I've actually read about this structure uh, in quite a popular book sent to me by a, a viewer, a Preston chap called Peter. Now on page 77 of Michael Williams' This Train's Now Departed, it makes reference to this very structure. The grandest of Bouch's structures and the only one that would rehabilitate his reputation today had it not been demolished in such a barbaric anti-railway age of the 1960s nearly 200 feet off the ground, 1,040 feet long, built on 15 piers, a 16-arch, grossimus structure of impossibly slim girders. There was nothing like it in Britain, and possibly nothing anywhere outside the fecund imaginations of animators of Disney or of DreamWork movies. Not far wrong. Not far wrong. So this unique viaduct, Bila, was demolished during 1963, just one year after the last train, the Stadymore Limited, had travelled eastward over the high girders for the final time. Its remains now is just the, the wonderful buttresses and a very lonely signal box. Now for me, I'm heading off, following the sloping line towards some of the viaduct sisters that still are there today and lovingly restored and looked after by the Eden Viaduct Trust. So between here and Bilar Viaduct is actually another viaduct. It was built around about 1860, which is 15 years before the world famous Ribblehead Viaduct actually opened.
So this was constructed by Chambers and Hilton for the price of £3,721 and is built of the local limestone. It's got nine arches, about 30 foot span and a total length of 366 feet. 78 feet tall, it was originally built to carry a single track but was widened to carry a double track part of the same contract for Podkill Viaduct which was completed around 1892. The local quarry here was actually an important intermediate source of revenue for the railway as the line passes the quarry once it was connected to this line. The quarry developed in the early 1920s with the rail connection and it provided along with a new signal box great revenue. Much of the output from this quarry was transported to the northeast but when they closed the Stadymore line it cut off all connections. It was only a freight only branch that remained from Appleby to Warcop and then past Kirby Stephen as far as the quarry itself. Now this viaduct was sold by British Rail to the owners of the quarry and the line works from whom it was acquired by the Northern Viaduct Trust in 2005 for a token payment of a pound. Now much restoration has taken place and occurred across this viaduct and it was open to walkers in 2005 to a total cost of £50,000. This is a, a nice little find if you come this way. It's got beautiful photographs telling the story of this line and the quarry, exploring the Eden viaducts. Brilliant. Right, off to my last viaduct. So to give you a map check, over in that direction is Kirby Stephen. This is the last viaduct before we get to the Millennium Bridge. However, the good people of the Northern Viaduct Trust have put us in a viewing area that takes you down to the base of the viaduct to get some good shots there. And they've also put the man himself on here, Sir Thomas Bouch, 1822 to 1880. The main man himself. That's good to see that, you know. Wow, he must have felt very proud when he built that Podgill viaduct. Absolutely splendid. The line travelled over a second local viaduct, less than a minute's rail travel away to Podgill. Today, you can walk both Podgill and Merrigill viaducts from the Stenkirth Park car park in Kirby Stephen. Podgill viaduct is also a Grade 2 listed structure about one and a half miles east of Kirby Stephen East Station. Right, and it's back down the line now to the other viaduct. Jump in the car, drive to Kirby Stephen, where we're going to finish this video. But in a major junction, an extensive rail yard for trains, all the way going off to T Bay on the West Coast mainland, the Eden Valley Railway had a big yard here, Kirby Stephen East. It opened to passengers on the 8th of August 1861, built by the South Durham and Lancashire Union Railway. And a homage to me from Blackpool, two express trains to Blackpool, one from Newcastle and one from Darlington, stopped here for about five minutes before setting off towards my hometown. 
and over by this station. Stenkirth Bridge, the combination of a footbridge later spanning over the railway, and now part of the A685. Just outside Kirby Stephen, it stands proud above the little Millennium Bridge where walkers may trek above the River Eden. Beside the Devil's Grinding Mill, it's now a little feature and is made of the galvanised steel resembling the wrought iron style of the Victorian age. And to the other side of the bridge, good attempts since 1996 have been made to restore the site of the railway into a 1950s style heritage centre of the name of the Stainmore Railway Company. Aims to build an extensive layout and amongst this collection of about seven locomotives, a very special express train is hidden. One very special express locomotive, mind, is the North Eastern Railway's number 910, called the Concord of its day. Now we ran along this line, the journey I've took along, and it was saved from being scrapped. Now being restored for and cared for by these volunteers, from the Stainmore Railway Company, it can proudly call its home here at Kirby Stephen East, the heritage centre where she belongs. I love a happy ending.